So Newton had, so to speak, extra mathematical reasons, if I may say so, to, that induced him to turn towards geometry in the 1670s. And in this context, it is interesting to, uh, to see that in many places in the manuscripts dated from the mid-70s and late 70s, Newton refers to aesthetic criteria. That is, uh, he praises the ancients because uh, the ancients method is more elegant uh, compared to the modern ones. So he even say that algebra provokes nausea to him. And um, it is famous, the fact, that Newton in his late years defined the algebraists, the modern mathematicians, as bunglers of mathematics. Um, so I, I find interesting to see how uh, his uh, approach to geometry is uh, often driven by uh, criteria that have to do with elegance, conciseness, um, rather than with uh, the power of the methods themselves. In this context, it is interesting to see what Newton has to say about a problem that is called Papus problem. This is a problem that was considered by Papus in the mathematical collections, and Descartes in the geometry considered Papus problem as uh, a test in order to prove the superiority of his algebraic method compared to the geometrical methods of the ancients. Actually, Papus' problem has to do with three or four lines. One has to find the locus that, that satisfies certain conditions. And um, in the case of the three or four lines locus, the solution of Papus' problem is a conic, is a conic section. Descartes in the geometry was able to approach this problem via algebraic means and uh, he was able to generalize this problem and face also the five and six lines locus and in principle uh, even higher order Papus problems, so to speak. Now Newton, when reading the geometry, was incensed, was very angry with Descartes because Descartes was defining himself as somebody who could do better than the ancients and uh, this is not generalizable to all of Descartes' works but at least in the geometry Descartes is definitely anti-Greek geometry so to speak. Uh, he explicitly says that his method is superior, that the ancients wrote very long books on geometry because they did not possess a proper method. If you think about it, I mean Descartes also as a philosopher is conceiving himself as a person who can build up from scratch a new philosophy that substitutes completely the Aristotelian philosophy taught at the university in his times. Now, Newton had a completely different approach. He, in the mid-70s, and later on this approach uh, was even stronger, conceived himself as, uh, as an ancient, if you like, as, a, as, a, uh, as belonging to an ancient tradition, and uh, he had very bad things to say about uh, the philosophy of the moderns. He had very bad things to say also about the mathematics of the moderns. So we see uh, Newton positioning himself against mechanicism, Cartesianism, for many reasons that have been studied by historians of religion, historians of philosophy, and so on. 
Now, as, as historians of mathematics, we can see that a similar attitude characterizes uh, Newton's rejection of modern Cartesian mathematics. For him to say that the modern had a method that was superior to the ancients was anathema, so to speak. And so what happened is that in the 70s, Newton, uh, and in the late 70s, early 80s, Newton devoted great attention to Papus' problem. And uh, he was able to achieve a geometrical solution of Papus' problems as the ancients required. As he writes in section 5 of Book 1 of the Principia, where he uh, published his results on Papus' problem. Now, Newton claimed that his geometrical solution of Papus' problem was more elegant, was aesthetically more beautiful compared to the Cartesian one. However, Newton's solution of Papus' problems works for the three four lines locus. It doesn't work for higher order Papus' problems, so to speak. And uh, so Newton's position is difficult in a way to understand. I mean, he is, uh, he was wishing to claim the superiority of his method, and his method is wonderful. It's based, uh, it is based on an understanding of uh, the projective properties of conic sections that is uh, very interesting indeed. It is a great result. Uh, but first, it is achieved via geometrical means that were not the geometrical means of the ancients. And second, it was not generalizable. Algebra has this great advantage over geometry in many cases, that an algebraic solution of a problem um, suggests a generalization. Uh, while a geometrical solution of a problem is very often a solution that is fit for that particular problem, but it is not easily generalizable. Again, here we have to think about Newton's position, and before criticizing him, we have to accept that for him, generality of methods was not necessarily an advantage. I mean, it seems to me that in certain period of his intellectual biography, Newton, especially in the late 70s, uh, considered the fact that the method is tailored exactly for that problem as a plus, as an advantage. Whereas we might think that mathematicians should always seek generality. 